good afternoon everyone we once again welcome you to storage and handling knowledge series uh, the next webinar under this platform and today we are talking about order picking solutions in warehouses today is a very uh, special uh, event because for the first time uh, ever since we started this journey we are going to go live we are going to show some live demonstration of uh, equipment and which will be very exciting for all the attendees. So, so far under this uh, storage and hands that just to share pure knowledge with all of our uh, uh, customers, consultants and the industry uh, persons. Uh, we have been covering basic concepts like uh, what are the general concepts in warehouses? What are the different types of pockets? What are the different types of warehouse trucks? Uh, we even held a panel discussion on the battery and charger technology. So basically this platform has becoming a thriving place for sharing and exchanging information related to intra logistics domain. So today, as I mentioned earlier, the topic is order picking solutions in warehouses and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome Mr. Oliver Chrysler, who is going to be the speaker for today. Now, uh, if I have to uh, explain his credentials, maybe half the time would go in just uh, putting the details about Mr. Chrysler. And just to give you a, a small sort of a information that even uh, me, ha like myself, has been trained by Oliver at some point in time. And uh, he is a complete expert in, uh, uh, in the products that he is dealing in and he knows every nut and bolt of the product. So a few of uh, Oliver's uh, credentials and I'm sure you will uh, be having a lot of knowledge uh, shared by Oliver when he's going through his presentation. With that, I would uh, request Oliver to uh, come on board. And the stage is all yours, Oliver. All of us are looking forward to gain uh, like uh, knowledge on this important topic from you. All yours, Oliver. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you for your introduction, Brooks. Um, I give you a first warning. The first warning is if you continue, this will change. This will change your, your mind and your setup and your ideas about all the things. Um, uh, briefly, I will cover the, the history when order picking started somehow, and then I will go into the different principles, what's been used all around the world, and I will, um, uh, in the middle of this section, we will see the award-winning, most um, advanced, highest technology on order picking, and, and then we will go look into different uh, scenarios, different um, uh, type of order pickings, and the different uh, types of, of uh, challenges in your warehouse. Uh, some challenges can be that your product is getting heavier and heavier. Um, the next challenge can be your product is getting smaller and smaller. The next one is can, uh, can be that in your warehouse, you don't have more space, but you have more SKUs, you have more products in your warehouse. And therefore, uh, we wanna uh, look at all the things, all the changes, all the variables which happen, happen in, in the warehouse uh, every now and then. Um, about 20, five years ago I visited Sony in Dubai and when I was seeing Sony at that time a TV set was a small little cube and handsome like a hotel unit and then they went into furnitures big big furnitures you could only place three units on the on the pallet and later on they was turning into flat screens a warehouse with the racking system and the pallet somehow stays the same but the variables are huge um, therefore, this was just an example to, to start. I'm going over to give you an introduction on our timeline. So this is not the focus on Crown, what we do, but nevertheless, I want to show you a timeline of uh, the products. Um, first question is, can you hear me all well? Can I get the thumbs up? Then I would be more than happy. So you see here, somehow in, uh, in the 70s, order picking got started. With order picking, 
you get a, a power pellet truck, and in on the box you just put a backrest on, and then you started order picking. That was uh, somehow in 1970. Then trucks got uh, perfect perfection, like in 95. They were modified, and in 95 the trucks got a bit more uh, uh, user friendly. And in Europe, uh, we decided to go for a totally different chassis. So when order picking, the Fox stayed on the ground, and therefore the operator, um, the Fox the platform stayed on the ground. So the operator didn't have to jump up and down via a step. Um, and then you see in 97, the product has developed further. So there was the more demand on lifting Fox, so people don't have to bend over. So we started this one in 07, and then in in uh, 13, we launched the Glove, which was award winner and was giving us the best product within Europe. And this is not a, a couple of people who think it's a good product. This is um, a um, um, award which we got from uh, the IFOI, which are professors of the industry, um, professors of uh, order picking. They understand the processes and everything very well. Um, they have the students, and therefore they, yeah, they uh, watch out what's what's happening. Out there. So this was a bit about the history. Now I pull out uh, a small little trolley, which you might have in your warehouse. On a trolley like this, you can only walk steps in a slow mode because you are constantly picking um, the, the 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 box in, in the platform in the bottom. So. Yeah, in some applications, it might be right. Um, for increasing productivity, you might go different. You might go for a trolley, which then has a platform on it, and you can store uh, more units. You can have them electrically power-driven. A couple of them are from, from, from China. They're clever ideas, like I saw the, the snake uh, system, which I really appreciated. Uh, the style was cool, a platform down on the bottom. And you carry the the, um, the load with you, and you have a kind of mobile device attached to it, which can be charged. So that is very very smart. Then, hand pellet truck. So when it goes from, uh, for into a higher loads, then you might want to use a hand pellet truck. Most people are using the hand pellet truck in the wrong direction. So if you continue with your evolution. And you started moving, pushing something through the warehouse, you might continue pushing something through the warehouse and you still kick with your shoes and with your feet. You still kick your, your hand pellet truck uh, and you can go fast. If you trail it, then you're much faster. So, this is how you can move more loads at a faster mode. You can make more steps, longer steps, and you can operate much faster. And up to two tons, which is really hard to, to pull and push. But um, yeah, therefore, hand pellet truck has had its existence over there. So, yep, we've seen customers uh, who are uh, having um, in the logistic range uh, 100, 120, uh, 400 uh, hand pellet trucks, and they do the whole operation purely via hand pellet trucks. Uh, some are even taking uh, material from the dock, so they come from, from the gate. And they're not using power pellet trucks, even hand pellet trucks from a dock into the warehouse, which is kind of kind of uh, exhausting, and really depends, I would say, on how much um, your labor uh, can manage moving loads around, and how much, uh, uh, let's say, in, in East Germany and East Europe, we say, um, uh, um, how much uh, the labor costs are. If the labor, labor cost is uh, cheap, unemployment is high. Then you have access to many, many uh, unemployed people, and you can wear them off. Oliver, uh, Oliver, just one thing. Your voice is a bit low. Uh, we are getting some messages that uh, voice is slightly low. Can you just look at that? Okay. So is it better now? So talk louder. Yeah, uh, slightly louder. That would help. Slightly louder may help, oh. Oliver. Thanks. Keep rem yeah. keep reminding me because. <laughs> I normally fall into my sleep mode <laughs> because usually I have an <laughs> audience in front of me, and that is a different, uh, is a game changer here uh, since I don't get the feedback. Cool. Thank you, Abhishek. So, 
Um, questions will be answered uh, later in uh, today, and uh, therefore um, uh, we just continue. So with the hand pellet truck in, in facilities, you might want to speed up your operation. Speeding up is so the operator cannot carry the material. Is uh, the material is too heavy, so he's got the hand pellet truck. Then we go into power pellet trucks. Power pellet trucks can be have all different kind of um, 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 sizes. They can go from as small as 1.3 tonner, 1.5 tonner. Um, I picked a special one here. We made a special one for um, um, uh, for the retail business, which is a smaller compact machine and. Uh, yeah, there are many, many different models. The one behind is uh, with the uh, 1.5 or 2 ton capacity, so you can move bulky stuff around, beverage, uh, glasses, bottles, uh, cans uh, uh, of uh, fruit juice, etc. That is then uh, the heavy duty machine. Nevertheless, when you have an ap uh, application where you have small items and you have a box here, small little um, um, inlays and you have to order pick let's say 20 different uh, then the challenge is with 20 different tasks where do you drop it let's assume you have got a bookstore or you get a, a, a store where you uh, have small little sd cards camera devices and so on you drop them down to the bottom and it might bounce into a different box so you have a misshipment and at the 3PL, the product is not yours. So it's not your loss. You get a bill at the end of the year when the inventory is not covered. And so, therefore, we decided to do a different product. And that was the demand from the industry. And that's over here. So it looks the same, but it acts differently. So here we've got lifting forks. So with lifting forks, there has two advantages. First of all, you take something out from the shelf and you don't drop it in on the ground. So like a, a book is getting a broken corner and it um, will be returned because it's, it's not in the original nice shape anymore. So you lift up the box because it won't drop, it won't bounce, it will be positioned in, on, on, on the, the, the box very nicely. So it's also available. Uh, to do some uh, for type of labeling and bagging. So if you want to put it in a, in a bag and you wouldn't want to attach your label, you can run this whole thing. You position a printer on here, what we see very frequently. That's why we've got here a, a, a nice device. Um, then you can take the power from the battery and you can run a scanner, a printer. You can uh, keep your plastic bags around and then you can uh, put it on the gadgets and off you can do the shipping. So this is the evolution from the trolley, from the small little basic one down here, to the second then to the so for most of the people they consider this more or less as a as a workbench. So they take they take the, the, the platform with the platform. Um, yeah, with the platform, you get the switches, so you don't need to go to the handle. As I put here on my, my platform, I got um, heavy, heavy stuff, heavy material on. And this is another good example with the heavy material. How many people uh, are doing uh, stock picking? and having back pain, back problems and so on, because they have to bend over, have to take heavy stuff and have to bring it over and have to bend down. So uh, to, to move in a more ergonomic position, um, the um, walkie pallet truck with the lifting forks is the ideal thing, even if you get heavy stuff, that you put it there from the shelf in and Back in the supermarket, in a supermarket supply, in a retail shop, you just move the material like a lifting uh, um, a table for, for um, plates, ceramics in the kitchen, then it moves automatically up. Then you take the stuff and you put it right into the shelf 
without bending over, you scrape the material, you turn over, and you place it in the racking. Um, so replenishing uh, stores. So this is about um, picking, taking items on the box if the items are heavy. And then we had ideas um, about the loading um, uh, uh, lollies and trailers. If the trailer is just a normal van, then you can take this one and put the pallet into the van. And that works with work, uh, workshops. And you drive into the trailer, you position it down, and then you drive the pallet out. And the pallet with the heavy stuff is commissioned. We see that a lot with the do-it-yourself stores. Let's assume you're doing order picking of, um, of paint. So you have a lot of heavy paint on it. Um, every uh, box is uh, 20 pounds, so easy. So when you have the 20 pounds on it, you get the stack with the 200 pounds of paint. You bring it into the delivery van and this will go over to the construction site. Okay, then this is not enough for some customers. Some customers wanted to go even smarter than that. They said, well, it's, it's a brilliant idea to have the lifting forks, but hey, let's go ahead in the evolution. And I'm trying to run a small little, little video here. So when you do order picking, you might move around with the whole stack. So you have then the whole stack of pallets. So here, You've got two types of forks. You've got the standard forks, like in a power pellet truck down in the bottom, and then you get the lifting forks. And with the lifting forks, you're lifting up to the height. Then you drive in. Then you pick up the whole load. And now you can do your individual picking of heavy stuff like wheels, tires, gearboxes, heavy equipment. And the heavy equipment you can uh, get uh, from a level uh, height, from this height over to this height. And then you can bring your material. And when you got your material on top and you want to do the shipment, you can continue order picking. And the best part comes now. If you, if you have your stack complete and you want to dispatch and you're finished with your order picking process, you're lowering the forks, you're lifting up the upper one, and then you move your load around to the shipping area. You drop the load on the ground. And you just grab another pallet. So you lift up the box. And you do the same procedure and with the next pallet. This is the efficiency of order picking. So you don't always run to the exit and you come back and you repeat. You have to, well, in big warehouses, you don't have to repeat the work uh, all the time. So you take a stack of five, six pallets with you and you do five commission, commissionings at once. This is the advantage of a DS, uh, one of the many. And then you can also put them in the, in the uh, correct height. So you can move your body around and you, it's less stress on the body when you do order picking and you take items straight from the racking and you turn them around and you put them on, on the box which are in the perfect uh, level height. Yo. So this is the DS. The DS will have then a mask on it. And even on the DS, you can move uh, the pallets, you can lift up and uh, lower the pallets from the side. 
so you can uh, click on here on the button. Bring the right. And then you can order pick, and then you can take more items on the forks back and forth. And then you can come to a comfortable height. That's why we flip a switch here on the side. Everything is designed to speed up the operation because we all know that the labor long term, looking at the seven years, 10 years, labor is much more expensive than, than the product. So when labor is so expensive, um, more expensive than, than the product, uh, return of investment is here within a year, maybe in you know, some other countries within three years, but then it's the benefit of you can get any person you want, any reliable picker, um, which, is, which is intelligent enough to use the, 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 the picking list, the pick by voice or whatever, to, to be a loader and the order pick. So this is our goal. We want to use the people as they are with their, with their knowledge, and we want to make it the job as easy as possible, and that increases productivity. You can imagine having a big warehouse, and every now and then you have to run through the whole warehouse to pick a new pallet for, at the end of commissioning. That means uh, you lose time uh, of the person for every pallet to pick it up uh, from, from uh, a pallet center. So if the pallet center is 100 meters away, and you do um, uh, 20 uh, pallet picking, you run two kilometers distance with a power pallet truck. You lose about uh, 15 minutes in total time of your order picking process. And therefore, yep, this is uh, the payback, what you've got by not losing the, the, the money uh, by having order pickers running around the warehouse like mad. Good. Um, we will have a um, question answer session um, later on so that uh, we can refer back to all the products later on if you want. If you have any questions, uh, we can go into the details. And as I said in the beginning, Abhishek is my second brain. We split our brain in half. He's been here many times. I've been to India many times. So <laughs> we share the information. So any question can be answered by Abhishek easily. Um, then, in, on the other hand, you can uh, get connected uh, with me via LinkedIn connection, uh, uh, chat box, and so on. Messages are quite efficient uh, running the system on LinkedIn. So, I can encourage you. Uh, my name is Oliver Preiser, you've seen before. Um, so, cool. The next one, the next one is a, a real order picker. What we picked here is a um, um, power. A uh, pallet truck commissioner, and uh, it's got a second shelf um, um, a front grill. The second shelf front grill is up here, and uh, this is for second shelf picking. So, if you have a demand for more picking areas, let's say your warehouse is growing, uh, not growing, you have no space to grow the warehouse, but your product range is growing. So you have to bring more SPUs into your facility. We have seen that with uh, Aldi, Lidl, and all those stores. In the past, people were happy with 7,000 products. Now they have 14,000, and they want to go over to 20,000. So they have a new goal. Um, how can they achieve the goal? With the same footprint of the warehouse, you might go for a second shelf picking, and therefore, huh, how is he, uh, can he get up? So he can run with the step ladder, or he can flip down, and then he can get up, and then he can pick from uh, the second shelf picking. So he's got a, uh, a nice uh, sturdy platform. He can grab the stuff, he can take the stuff down, up, and moving over. Um, when Crown designed something like that, then uh, safety is is a must. So what we've done is we take we've taken the step here, which is a smart little step here, and then when you flip it down, it's got a sensor. It's got a sensor, so the moment um, the, the step is down, the truck will not operate, will not travel. So from a further distance, I make a little demo. So you're in the truck. Step is down, no traction. You're going up, 
If you step on your steel wheel, it's sturdy, it's not out of plastic, it's out of metal. You step somewhere and the truck is not traveling off, accelerating, powering off, and you're not falling off the, the machine. The another one is when the step is down, and operator forgot that the step is down and he would drive. So he's not having here as a as a killer, body killer. So there is no chance for him dropping down into an aisle, stepping over the, 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 the step. Uh, therefore, whenever this uh, step is down, no traction. It says, hey, get the step up. Then he can walk down because there might be uh, traffic. There might be uh, another uh, truck passing by and you want, don't want to have him falling out with a half the body and then somebody else crashing him. Good. We have a lot of ideas how we can um, increase productivity. Productivity is super important on on um, um, order picking process. First of all, when forks are elevated, the platform is still having a small little step down to the floor. The step platform stays on the ground. So this the platform is not elevating with the elevating the force. So actually there's a linkage behind so people who do order picking pickings and do the 300 uh, picks um uh say 300 picks and a half a shift 700 picks a day this is for them super stressy if they have to step in and step out that means in and out and in and out all the time totally exhausting totally exhausting because they run actually uh the eiffel tower up and down twice a day because of the steps um 700 uh, steps um 700 picks or 700 steps and as low as possible the the, uh, the least uh, exhausted the operators are another one is the fork length if you look at the fork length you can have uh, single double um, all kinds of fork lengths um, some are using uh, pallets uh, many customers are using trolleys um, those are the, the plastic platforms with the um, with the um, uh, wheels uh, in the bottom the caster wheels and they get manually pushed into the supermarket uh, to replenish uh, we see those type of trolleys in automotive uh, industry to have for each car the individual section everything uh, as an extra for the car uh, on one of the shelves so they come with uh, long forks they have four or five uh, small little rackings on on the back and then uh, they transport for the car manufacturing all the specials which might be a walnut, a special dashboard, a special spoiler, uh, some type of funny things in the dashboard and different navigation, a USB uh, connector, whatever. Sometimes I even see screens when uh, it's like on a fork, you get the heated screens, will be in the racking for each car individualized. Yeah. Then order picking with the double length forks. This is um, simplifying uh, the order picking process. And then I want to show you a lot of more gadgets which we got. I switch over to my back camera. Then we walk to the other room. In my second room, I've got here all the um, yeah, interesting things which are uh, the highlights for order picking processes. Whether it's a pocket, a pouch where you put in a scanner, or a scanner gun holder where you can hold the scanner in, uh, a tray. This one is for weight. So we attach it to the front and you collect waste. So you have to uh, uh, unwrap the shrink wrap of your product. You just keep this one in the front. And then you have a, a trash bag in the front and you take all the remaining stuff and you throw it in. Then clipboards, if somebody is on the traditional way and is still using the, the, the um, picking paper, the picking list, 
it's kind of historical. Some customers uh, which have a very small peak season or very few items to pick, but big volume. I see that a lot in the beverage industry. They still go around with the manual picking uh, systems and the clip paper. Um, then uh, moving arm, the moving arm, you can mount a terminal, a printer, um, a touch screen, et cetera, uh, lights, and a special one for a scanner gun, a scanner gun holder, and even a kind of tablet in the front. So this helps simplifying the, the picking process. Cool. So, so take Oliver, we, Oliver, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. yeah, so we are just halfway through. Just a uh, heads up for you. Cool. So with I show you the details in the close up, all the different clips. And of course, this is not a wooden thing when it's brown. <laughs> it's it's sturdy, it's reliable and uh, super cheap. Cool. So being halfway through, uh we can finish up with this system. There is a, a, a charger station. And in this charger station, you get a small transmitter. So you take the transmitter and you put the transmitter in the glove. And then you wear the glove and the glove has a clicker, a clicking device. And when you click on this one, then we can self-propel the truck. I will give you a live demonstration on that. Um, before we do the live demonstration, I would like to ask um, Abhishek, to run the, the the video of the side by side comparison, but before we run the video, I just want to give you the, some ideas. The the company on the video, well, the company on the video is a Metro Store. The Metro Store, uh, the operator is in a cold store, which is about eight Celsius. So it's uh, not refriger uh, refrigerated. It's a cold store for butter, milk, dairy products, and so on, cheese, and so on. The operator uh, throughout the day is loading some kind of 10, 12 tons of material. On it. So those will go to the supermarkets, um, to hotels, to restaurants in big volumes pelletized. So we see an application to optimize the picking speed, they are going to use a headset. We call it a variable. And uh, with a variable, we understand anything which guides him, which helps him to be more efficient. Variable can be uh, as modern as Google Glasses. We see them rarely, but it's coming. Then we see a lot with the, with the headset. Um, so a voice is telling him which aisle, which location, and how many items to pick. Um, this is very common. And then we see variables where somebody's got a mobile phone on the wrist and that is connected maybe to a scanner. And then you have a variable like a handheld unit. And with the handheld unit, you get the, your, your, your area. You should look up where and do I need to be next. Yeah. More traditional is something um, directly mounted to the post of the truck. Something to directly mounted to, to the to the middle section of a of a forklift. Um, we see that uh, let's say less and less on on the market. Yeah, um, paperless are dying. Um, we say in in the center of Europe, uh, <laughs> if you don't go with the future, the future runs faster than you. So you will be uh, deleted out from the system. And this is uh, what happened to companies like Schlecker. Uh, Schlecker was a drugstore company uh, with uh, 80,000 shops in Germany. So they had shops in every small little village and this uh, company went bankrupt simply because they were using all type of technologies, not modern, more traditional stuff. Good. Um, Janak and, uh, Janak and uh, uh, Abhishek, can you run the side-by-side -side comparison video now? Yes, uh, we just ran through it. Cool. Excellent. So I switch over to Janak to run the uh, video, which is called the side by side video. So on the one side, you see um, 
the operation of um, of a truck without traditionally uh, without a quick pick remote. And on the other side, you see a, a person picking with the most efficient way of order picking. So Oliver just told on the video is just about to get over. So the Oliver, the video is done. You can switch to the live view. Good, good. Oh, you see my post on my hand? Can you? Okay. So this is. Uh, I'm wearing the glove right now, and this is the the push button on the glove. So if I press uh, twice, the truck will propel itself. And as long as I keep it pressed, the long it will continue to drive. It drives up to about 30 seconds, um, and then uh, we lock out first. We saw people doing funny things. They sat in the canteen and kept the trucks running in front of the door, and that was not the purpose of the whole thing. <laughs> um, um, it has a distance checker, so it runs up to 15 minutes, uh, 15 meters from uh, proximity to the uh, operator. So. But what, what, what was is the main person, uh, purpose of this, this thing? So here I have a picking scenario, which is on top and on the bottom is identical. On top, we have the picking scenario with the locations of the items. The same area is down here at the bottom of this picture. And on the top, it's just a normal order picking. 
he drives to a location like I go shopping with my wife in the supermarket. Here, I'm alone. I got my pick list on the trolley. So I go into the supermarket and I get my butter, my yogurt, and my cheese. And I go back and forth, load it on the trolley. Then I go to the next location. Then I pick up my rice, my noodles, and my chapati. I put everything on my forks and I go ahead. And then I get, uh, as a non-vegetarian, my meat and my sausage, and I go out from the supermarket. But it takes time because I go negative, and you see here that the uh, negative walking steps are 49 steps, 44% um, of my time. So now I'm changing that one. I go with my wife. So this time when I go with my wife, I do the same scenario. I get my butter, I load it in, my wife pushes the, the um, uh, trolley forward and then we get my yogurt and my, my cheese on it. And then we go to the noodles and on the go, she is pushing the trolley with me. So this is the, 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 the great idea behind the system and see what what's going to happen. The negative steps, especially the ones with load, we don't walk backwards to load uh, the, 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 the trolley. So we walk straight through the warehouse, forward, forward. And instead of my wife pushing the trolley, we can pay two operators. It's, it's the system which is actuated and uh, moves automatically. So to give you a better understanding how the system works, I do a live session up here. Let's take my, my post up here. Um, you should see my warehouse now. Down in the bottom, you just see number one, number two, number three. And then I will run with my system, with my block to the warehouse and do a live ticket. So I step into the truck. When I'm in, then everything is switched off. There's no sensing. When I'm out, the LED goes green, which means, hey, I'm available for you to click. And when I press, drives. And the, the program. So I take my first box, box number one. Then I get to be a pick by voice. Sorry, pick by voice. I get the info where the next location. So I keep on going on item two, load it on. Then I go on item three. Then I see, uh huh, item four is over there. So I take my item number four. Then Item number five is up there. So I go gently through the warehouse. This is over there. Seven here. Eight over there. And if I touch the button, it will not hit the wall. It keeps the distance to the wall because it's got sensors in the front. So this is the efficiency of picking. And the efficiency of picking works the very best. The more product you have in the warehouse and the more mix of product range you've got in your warehouse. So I, I like the system. Um, we've got um, uh, the IFOY award as the gold product, the best product which got invented. And that's been about uh, five years ago. And since that time we sold thousands of units. Um, it's, it's, it's a must go for the supermarkets. Uh, people are wondering why can uh, have one supermarket a product uh, uh, cheaper like a uh, Nutella cheaper for 279 and the other one uh, cannot lower the price uh, lower than 299 simply because they have efficient order picking processes. So here again, I take the, the button, I click on it, and it propels off. And if I keep it pressed, it keeps on rolling. The acceleration, the stopping, is programmable. So it's not a fixed speed. So I have one uh, company who's put liquids on it. Yeah, um, detergent and uh, the liquids were five liter, ten liter, twenty five liters. So we went very gentle in acceleration, very gentle in stopping. 
but it helps the person to load products on the box back and forth. So I'll bring the product back. And then I show you how this whole system works with um, the, the sensor. So we got here in the front, we got uh, um, a, a laser. The laser is shooting out and protects the front edge of, uh, of the area. And then we've got extra lasers down here in the bottom out from the chassis. And you see on my shoe, yes, um, this is the extra laser pointer. If the person is getting the voice, pick the next product. And then he run, starts running and he's crossing the front end of the product of the, of the power pellet truck. And uh, at the same time, he presses the button. The truck will, will give a loud beep. It will blink. And uh, the, when the sensor is blinking, it tells the, the operator, hey, something is obstructed, something is in the front, and uh, I'm not allowed to travel. And therefore, uh, I keep distance from the person. So now I. Um, On the button. So, bingo, here it goes. It keeps my safe distance of about a meter and it's super safe. I have full trust into the system. Uh, we have more than uh, thousands of trucks out there. We have um, around uh, 100,000 hours already on the clocks. Never had any incident with this whole system. So, I love it. <laughs> so, forks important for order picking processes um whether they they are lifting or whether you you um um, um lifting for heavy loads switch over here and therefore i can show you a couple of uh modifications we go now on the on the order picking truck and on the order picking truck this is our web presentation you see the whole variation of trucks, the, the double long forks. The next one is uh, lifting forks. Yeah, so simplifying the heavy stuff. Um, then again, a scissor fork type. So two forks. Can you hear me? Ah. Yeah, so uh, just a heads up, we have 15 more minutes. And uh, at this stage, I will request all the attendees to uh, start posting their questions because we'll be taking questions after 15 minutes. Excellent. Thank you very much, Abhishek, for guiding me through this. Um, so you see the different um, type of forks, the, the quality of the product in the front end, and uh, we can share all those pictures with you if you want. And this is, this is uh, uh, amazing stuff. What's happened in what happened in the industry over the last uh, 10, 15 years is all is uh, with a focus how to simplify order picking, and um, yeah, we don't see any retailer without those trucks. They buy typically they buy big volumes. Good. So now there there is an issue in the industry that. Uh, let's say retailers or the industry is having more and more of a product range. So how can we address that one? First of all, if you get more products, there's a tendency that you go into multiple shelves. So you have one product down in the bottom and the second product up there. So you, with the same floor space, with the same footprint, you can increase your storage. This is not rocket science, this is very simple. But ha, how can the person reach? So he needs something uh, like the platform to lift up to the second shelf. But this is typically step number one. Uh, people are doing uh, the double step. Sometimes you've got a full uh, lower pallet of one meter eighty plus twenty centimeter clearance plus the the beam. Then uh, maybe even a light system underneath. So the second pallet is very high up. So then you need more than a second step. So you might go for a stock picker. What I've got here is uh, uh, um, a work assist vehicle, which is a product 
which we call work assist. And the work assist is a smart unit where you can drive and lift at the same time. So you can go up to the racking, you can take the box, you can pick it there, and off you go. You can imagine how complex that is without a, 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 a suitable unit, without a power pellet truck. Um, it's got gate locks, it saves, it's got a, a platform here. You can uh, store um, 90 kilos on top, 150 kilograms on, top, uh, on, on the bottom. I've seen operators putting um, um, some type of, of uh, refrigerators down at the bottom and so on. So uh, a super smart truck, and you can see on the, on the elevated uh, way how high that uh, truck uh, can go um, to simplify order. Yeah. So the weight is a, a smart moving item. Um, um, typically, huh, it's got another huge advantage. In Europe, we have, uh, in every town, we have a couple of do-it-yourself stores um, where you buy your equipment for home to do your refurnishing. Um, um, you have your jigsaw over there, you buy all the, the, the um, you know, it's a man's shopping world, uh, tiles, everything. So when you are selling a compressor, then people want to touch, and then people have boxes, and when it says compressor plus 116 items, yeah, with extra nozzles, extension cords, etc., how does anyone know at the cashier that this person put the right material into the box? They open up, and it's a guesswork. So to minimize the theft and unhappy customers, there is a focus uh, with a wave that down in the bottom everything can be touched and grabbed and handled, so people can hold everything in the hand, and on top is the unopened uh, product which nobody can access. And when the customer says, yes, I want to have this compressor, I want a tool, and I want to have more, my set with two actors and so on uh, as a power drill, then they take the original box from top with the wave down and bring it over to the cashier. At the cashier, they get the stamp and off they go. So this is a, a, um, a type of, of, of uh, keeping your, your stock in a retail uh, store uh, up clean, up tidy. You don't lose items, you don't uh, lose material, and you are getting recognized as the shop where you get something and it, it is a promise on the package, promise of 100 115 items. So that is uh, customer satisfaction, which is increasing here with the with the wave and order picking. The next one is a stock picker. So now you get the same scenario, but as you know from uh, those large companies like Amazon, oh yeah, um, all of a sudden you get warehouses 10 meters high, and you got uh, 130,000, 150,000 SPUs. How can you address that one? Okay, so you can start small, like over there. Then you take a, an order picker, front end, and you put the mast on. So I will give you a nice demo. I think this is the distance. So I hope it's powered up. Nope. Turn on the, the truck. So I go here and lift up the box and uh, go out. Then I lower the box. Aha. So, this is for uh, simplifying um, uh, picking when uh, stuff is up high and uh, you have it elevated and you want to 
have you, you have the, the need of any product from top down. So this one is the stock picker. There are two options on the stock picker. Um, first of all, it can, uh, you can manually load the one ton on it. You can take a pallet up with one ton. Typically, products are being getting placed by a reach truck. So the reach truck is working in a narrow aisle, and the reach truck with the moving mass is moving the pallet from the dock into the stock. So they work in a narrow aisle, position the pallet, and then with the stock picker, you pass by and you pick the items. I've got customers which are having shoe boxes, shoe cartons, and, um, um, and therefore a retail of shoes. They load manually into the racking, they load manually out of the racking, and therefore they have a super tight, super narrow aisle. So the aisle then is only one meter 40, one meter 50. If your load is heavy or super heavy, then you might go for a turret truck. I know that uh, in uh, some, we have some customers in, in India using turret trucks. It's very, very typical for Middle East to use uh, turret trucks. I mean, the Middle East doesn't have much production, so they import all the warehouse, uh, warehouse products. So they bring the material to the sea. Um, so the, the turret trucks, the short one, uh, a baby, with only a uh, six meter lift height, um, will bring in the pallet into the back. So it lifts up, the mass moves left and right, and uh, delivers the pallet into a, um, a, a tight racking. And at the same time, the operator can go on, on and pick manually into the cabin or onto the box. Okay. So to close up, I have here a nice picture for you. Prepared a nice picture for you on on the most optimized warehouse I've ever seen in the industry. And yep, here we go. So what we have here is an optimized warehouse. It's a combination of a turret truck running in the center, loading the pallet in, and outside all the pickers who always see the front face of a warehouse, regardless how much stock you've got. Let's assume you've got a, 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 a warehouse and your task is to move a lot of products. So you take the product in from the incoming area, we take a turret truck and you stock it. When there's demand, you take the pallet out, you put it in the bottom, and outside you have uh, order pickers picking, and they always see a full pallet, and they can put, pick regardless how much uh, stock you have left over. This is one area. We have Aldi doing the other way around. So the Aldi in the moment has um, uh, 14,000 uh, SKUs. They do it the other way around. So they have turret trucks or reach trucks on the outside, they put in the, the, the um, pallet, the stock, and then when there is demand, they pull it out and top it to the bottom. So the order picker in the center, the person, through the channel of 160 meters, sees the, the product left and right. So 160 meters means every meter another product. Each side is so you get uh, 260 products, then two levels. Uh, 260 times two, you get about 500 products in a, in a, in one channel of 100 meters. So with uh, 14,000 units, then you can imagine how many how many uh, aisles and uh, those rack systems they have. This is, I think, this is for me the absolute optimized picking scenario. You walk with the with the um, order picker, best uh, possibility with the with the quick pick remote which increases the product productivity by 16%. And by walking through, you've got all your products on your box. And then every 10, 20 pallet, you get a cleaner. So it's a housekeeping person. He's taking all the scrap, the scratch foil, all the remaining pallets, all the stuff which is empty, he takes out, he clears out, and then he drives out and makes the housekeeping nice and tidy. And this is, this is for me the, the absolute optimization of uh, warehousing, so you get the maximized space 
and especially if you do a refrigerated uh, product, well, super cool. Um, with so much of product in it, you need very little cooling for the building itself. Most product is cooled from the lorries coming uh, to the dock. Good, Abhishek. Are we somehow? Uh, yeah, we are on. We are on time. If you want to cover something in the next two minutes, we can take that. Good. Yeah, I have here another. I take my angle. Switch. Ah, yeah. Um, here on the TSP, I did a TSP training session, and on the turbo truck training session, the the people were asking me, Oli. Uh, give me give me five key features on the turret truck. <laughs> I said, well, five, five. Um, I created a workflow. I said, well, there's so much. There's so much about the front, the middle, and, and the bottom, and so on, and, and the mast. Uh, <laughs> it's so much. Um, we cannot get it down to, to five items. Uh, it is hundreds of things because we always keep the person, the op. Funny one. There was a special demand. This one works with a glove. So we were discussing um, uh, that you have switches on the side to elevate and lower the forks. So therefore, we said, okay, we can make it remote as well. So we have the button for raise and lower, and then the forks raise and lower automatically, and it will be indicated by the the green light when it's a steady light. It will lift. If it's a blinking light, it will lower. So you can be on the other side. Let's say you have a conveyor system and the, the conveyor system delivers pallet and then you have to commission and then you have to go from here to there to all the different conveyors. Ah, so simple. You just push the button and then you push on the clicker and with the clicker, the forks raise and lower as you wish. So this this is a simplifying uh, order picking process at a conveyor uh, area in the conveyor belt system. Um, when at the end of the day, when it's when it's finished, you put it back into the into the charger, and the next morning it takes about uh, eight hours. The next morning it's ready to run again. Uh, we've got all different types of, of uh, picking gloves, even some for for a cold store. It, it's it's the absolute optimized uh, style of pick. Um, if if you're a, a European company and you want to be on top of uh, uh, the systems, uh, you want to have, uh, yeah, like Aldi in the moment is uh, uh, promising um, uh, the the customer in France that every customer in France will have maximum 15 minutes uh, travel time to a Aldi store. So you can imagine how much demand there is for retailers to bring the material in. So, yeah. I'm looking forward for your questions. This is a lot of yeah. thinking from my side. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right, Oliver. Uh, I think uh, we are getting a lot of questions. I think we should now uh, start addressing those uh, uh, questions. Uh, so let me just... Uh, uh, Right. So, uh, Oliver, the first uh, question that uh, has uh, come in is uh, something uh, where you started the journey. And uh, so even today, people have a choice of hand pilot trucks, uh, powered pilot trucks and the low level order pickers. Now, what is the criteria on which you choose uh, which one to go for? Because uh, order picking as a concept can be done either on a pallet with the person moving around or on an order picker. So what is the tipping point where you say uh, a GPC would be more uh, productive or useful as compared to a BOPT or a hand pallet truck? First of all, we look at the, they are, it, it's complex, first of all. First of all, we look at uh, the pallet. Do you have a pallet system where there is a return system? Are you receiving the pallet back? 
um, if it's if it's your own business and you are having trolleys, which uh, uh, is like a refund system that the trolleys are going back and forth and back and forth. This is your system, so you have a high investment of about forty dollars for a trolley, and then a trolley which is a kind of platform 80 by 80 centimeters with two sides and some some rubber straps um, it's yours. so your system then works very well automotive industry goes for shelf and racking anything which i'm selling to supermarkets um, it will be my supermarket my chain and i'm getting uh, having a re return system so on the return system i will not use pallets if i'm selling something to uh, hotels, restaurants, and I'm losing my pallet, then I'm using the, the platform of, uh, of shared items, and the uh, pallet is about $7. I need 10,000 pallets, so I go for, for my, uh, my uh, system in the warehouse, and uh, when I lose pallets, I get new ones for the same uh, uh, amount of money, and uh, this is a nice little platform that, that uh, say, I ship overseas, I would go for pallets. Then the system of lifting forks and um, heavy stuff, this is really, uh, you have to bend over, this is a small item. Um, so I use lifting forks when I have uh, small items and, and uh, because I don't drop them down and I don't damage them, or delicate items. Um, we have a company here, where they make uh, lithium waivers. They cannot drop anything. So everything must be gently, gently moved in and out of boxes. So you don't want this person to bend over. So it can be up and the product. So the product, the refund system of pallets or not, and uh, the third one is weight. If you get weight, heavy weight, um, you might destroy your good, so you might decide to go for pallets. So a pallet which is destroyed will go somewhere else until you get fresh ones. So you will call the company, bring me fresh pallets, and you're done. Is that answering the question somehow? Yeah, yeah, it, it does. It does. So thanks, uh, Oliver. I think uh, with this, people will have a better idea of uh, which product to pick when they are talking about order picking. Yeah. Uh, but it's so complex. I mean, this is um, uh, on my side. It's years of experience. We have here three product managers covering order picking processes because it's complex right. and it's constantly changing. Um, in the right. past, we had something in the middle with the paper list, so people were mm -hmm. going back to the unit all day. Now, with uh, pick by voice, uh, people don't jump to the machine anymore. They want to keep the distance. They want to be there where they load the stuff on. So they want to be at the back on the box. Right. right. So this thing right. is how right. the whole system runs from front is most important to now back is most important. Right, right. I, and, and I think, Oliver, it was very interesting how uh, you explained that order picking itself is a science. With that negative steps and the time that is taken for the negative steps and all that, it's something that people generally are not uh, sort of aware of very consciously. So that was very interesting, Oliver. When we do studies, uh, then we figure out that people, uh, um, we, we talk to the person and they say, oh, at the end of the, 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 the day, I need medication. Um, uh, I'm 40, I can't do the job anymore because my legs, my, my knees are hurting and so on. So we get the input. And then we try to influence that. How can we avoid uh, the pain in the legs, the pain, and so on? So we had one customer who said, uh, we, we interviewed him, and he said, well, and during the week, I was, in the past, I was exhausted. I was loading 10 tons of material on the box. So now with the big, big remote, I've, I've got sex during the week. Uh, so we said, okay, we cannot publish that one. And he said, well, I do sports again. So cool, cool, cool uh, feedback. So he's doing sports. So uh, he's not totally exhausted and it's not end of life, just earning money and uh, you're exhausted and all day you make uh, your, your mind about how can I uh, do this for the next five more years, which is sometimes impossible, yeah, if you don't have to right. try to. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So uh, the next question uh, which is coming uh, from uh, uh, Mr. Netaji of UGC Logistics. He's asking, please elaborate more about the driverless picking as a concept. Like, how is driverless picking catching on as a technology? Oh, as a technology, um, I pull it out and um, I have a booklet. Um, there is a concept where we go over to the application 
And uh, we I have here a couple of folders. Drag one out. This is in ah, it's a mess. No, it doesn't matter. Um, it's it's a, 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 a booklet where we go through every single page. We check with you the concept, the the system, what you are using, and in the end, when you finish the whole booklet, we can tell you how much how much of um, improvement you're going to see in your warehouse. Yep. Because this is a technology. We have a, a technology advisor, uh, which is uh, Markus Liestfeld. And Markus Liestfeld will go with me and a couple of other colleagues to the booklet per customer, per application. And then we can tell you, we can promise you about uh, 6%, 10%, maybe 16% improvement if you select that and such. So this is a full analysis. It's done on the, on the paper list and we do it per customer. Okay, I think, yeah, I, I think Oliver, uh, you missed uh, that main part. Uh, this gentleman is asking about driverless picking, like you don't have an operator at all on board, like not quick pick, but uh, like yeah. an AGV. I, I assume that, I mean, uh, I assume that he's talking about something like that. We have, we have companies who said we want driverless. Driverless, which in some cases is driving uh, the machine does it itself. It goes from one pick location to the next to the next automatically. Uh, a machine like that will cost you the first one about 120,000 euros, uh, dollars, and then uh, you put on top uh, the, the software and so on, and every further machine will cost you 40,000. This is a, a common event what people wanted to have in the industry before we had the law. So they said right. we take an ATV. On the AGEV on top, we make the green, a red, and the uh, yellow light. So green means you are picking, red means the tr and truck is uh, moving with you, and you are standing at the back of the forks when it's yellow, the truck will be prepared and drive, and the truck will drive from the location to the location. The, the benefit of the system was, ha, huh, the benefit of the system was um, the warehouse management is fully integrated. The downside is, uh, you have no flexibility. You have no flexibility in, in, in moving around, uh, uh, picking, uh, selecting uh, the speed, uh, doing your selection, and you had to connect it. The warehouse management system, which is huge effort. Our system is only a connection between clock and the truck, and the operator goes from step to step. Right, right. So, Oliver, we have just lost your video. I don't know whether it's. Uh... Uh, some issue at your end. Yeah, no, we are. You are back now. You are back. Okay. My so the next. Calling. Yeah. <laughs> so the. Oh. Oh. Okay. Sorry. So the. He's so the next. Right, here right now. <laughs> uh, right. No problem. So uh, the next question is: Is there a specific uh, requirement of flooring for wave to operate? Wave. Um, first of all, the wave has no forks, so non palletized That's the first one. Um, so supermarkets, do it yourself stores, um, uh, pharmaceuticals, um, where you have small packages, small items. Uh, we see that with mobile phone companies or everything which is handsome in, in, a, in a, let's say, a cube size. That is perfect. Um, we even see that in, in um, um, hospitals where they have to bring out the medication. So they have trays and trays and trays and they go for floor number seven and such and every floor is getting a box. So they load it off. They don't have to run around with their trolleys anymore. Um, order picking with wave is uh, cool when you don't need the pallet. So somebody is placing the pallet in a racking and you order pick out from a wave up to many, many items. And the good thing is you can have the wave with the rail guidance. So you can build up a, an aisle five meter tall and as narrow as 90 centimeters. So super high density. And this is what we see a lot with clothing industry. So you go down an aisle and you get all the different layers, all the cartons and boxes of, of t-shirts and of uh, jumpers and all different sizes and all different uh, colors. And then you go up elevated with the, with the weight. And uh, oh, if you do floor picking, you need a huge floor. If you go up to five meters, wow, simplified. Is that answering the question? 
right so oliver the question actually was about for the flooring requirement like like you have tr34 for reach truck and uh, super flat recommendation for tsp similarly yeah. is there any flooring recommendation for wave uh, uh, we have um, some experience even with people who put an angle and ties on it um do it yourself those they have the garden center garden center is having a drainage so it goes in a slight angle so it's designed for flat floors but it doesn't need to have these super flat it's got our truck got the pivoting axle in the front so you can go out on the pavement outside no issue right so we have one question from mr gaurav of uh, dhl who is asking in case there are multiple order pickers with quick pick uh, running around the warehouse so will this multiple horns confuse the operators or will it hamper their productivity and efficiency absolutely in the beginning they love it and then after a while they ask for <laughs> um, uh, the noise to be uh, uh, lower that lower so we have three levels of noise and the lowest one is a pp and not a bang yeah so so it, it can be like road run it can be annoying if you have 100 we have an application in Morrisons in, in the Netherlands and we run around 160 60 order pickers and all with a loud horn yeah make no sense so we can thin the sound down that's a very okay. relevant question. <laughs> right if you right. come home and you have your pp <laughs> they get annoyed yeah right so uh, the next question is uh, from uh, mr yogesh kanav rajshri polypack though this is not related to order picking oliver but uh, we should uh, try to answer this any which ways so his question is related to double deep uh, mhe for rolls roll handling it's a it oh. i think it's a textile company rolls double deep for okay. roll handling good, good. Uh, not the carpet carpet is So five meter uh, uh, carpet. Uh, double deep. I would recommend uh, a reach box with a telescopic box. Uh, so you have uh, we can put the coi box on, so you can spread the box out. So you can take uh, a single pallet or a double deep pallet with a coi. So the coi box will stretch out from let's say one meter to one meter eighty, and uh, they can be nicely extended. That would be if you go for high level. Uh, for for ground level, you can take any truck with a double length box, double length box, as you wish. Okay, okay. So the next uh, But, push, yeah, sorry. But you can you could take the stock picker, mm -hmm. and you can uh, create a wide aisle or a platform on top. So you have mm -hmm. the stock picker with a long platform, and then you can manually load, uh, um, uh, um, let's say, garment into the rack. We've seen that quite often. That the uh, garment is not heavy, and people uh, receiving the whole spillage in the front with the, with the uh, uh, one ton of material, but they load the, the rows manually into the racking. So that is another option. So you would use a, a stock picker. Right. So uh, I think uh, this is more to do with when you have fabric rolls, which generally require a ram attachment, which goes to the core. And then you place it on the rack like a cantilever. So, uh, sure. yeah, is that available in a as a MHE solution in some way where it can go double deep uh, with uh, keeping it like that? I have not seen it. I have okay. not seen a carpet roll double deep. No, no. Right. But if somebody might offer you. This is, but it's, it's, it's double deep. It's a killer in, in the length. Uh, okay. We really need to discuss how long is the roll. If the uh, roll is what I think, like a carpet roll, five meters, and double mm -hmm. D is ten meters, you will not find a pocket uh, for a ten meter distance of a load. That's that's impossible. Right, right. Uh, next question is that uh, so uh, sometimes reach truck is also used for order picking. Like uh, you take the pallet down, uh, you pick some products, and then place the pallet back. So. Is it an is it a, a right way of uh, doing order picking? Is the question. Um, I would say this is a traditional right way if you have one person in your facility and you have very little traffic. So you use one equipment 
and then uh, you have something which is moving uh, st uh, stuff from the loading dock in, and you have one person who is doing all the handling. First of all, when you put your pallet down, you don't know where to put it on uh, on on the empty pallet, so you have to bring an empty pallet. But for many applications, like um, uh, we have um, um, a CBS, uh, Costco as a customer, Costco, and Costco is using one truck for the whole facility, offloading trailers, um, stocking it, and therefore they use a reach truck for all purposes. But slow movement. This is not an optimized high speed warehouse where people are running across uh, and, and everybody, everybody's got a specific task. Yeah. But, yep, I see those warehouses. Right. So, Oliver, the next uh, question is come in in terms of training requirements. The training requirements. For yeah. example, uh, you find operators easily for products like forklifts and reach trucks. But what about turret stock pickers? Is there a special training module required for training an operator to run a turret stock picker? Or the same operators can be upgraded to run turret stock pickers? Yeah. Um, every country, even Europe, has a different license. And then uh, America again. So we have OSHA, we have Lola, we have so many different licenses. But in general, um, a forklift, you have the forklift license, and then you have to have an introduction to uh, all the other equipment. Like, um, uh, you want to run a tow truck, you get the, the official forklift license, so you know about tipping, about uh, stacking, about products, how, how to pick and uh, how long the, the pop should be. And then on top, you get about a half an hour, uh, half a day introduction to the function of the tow truck. So very simple, very straightforward. Nothing very really special. We do an exam on the way. We see a lot of uh, retail stores which run the way. So therefore, you don't need the two days full training uh, with practical session how to move pallets around. It's got no forms. Therefore, we can do a special session wave purely, so you don't get the forklift license, then you get a, get a wave license. And that takes half a, day, half a day. Right, right. So uh, the next question is that uh, when we have a product like turret stock picker or a stock picker. Is there some sort of automation available even on those products like we have quick pick remote on GPCs? Yep, it is. Um, in our stock picker, uh, in our turret truck, which is uh, sadly up <laughs> uplifted, um, we have um, a scanner gun and we have auto position system. So you can go on the crown videos and you can run APS out of position, it's like a warehouse navigation. Um, you click on the barcode of your wrecking system, click, and uh, you give the travel command, and the truck will go right there at the optimized speed. So you can take a, a newbie, uh, um, a learner on the uh, on the tour truck, and he will do it from the very, very beginning. He will do top performance. He will beat an experienced uh, uh, operator who is doing the job since 20 years. Right. So we call it half automated, and the, uh, the industry name is semi automation. So it's a half. Okay. I still have the operator on top, and he's handling the product, but uh, the truck will bring you to the location. Super precise. Right. So uh, just another question related to turret stock picker is in terms of when a person is up uh, at a height. So, uh, and if, if there is a person in the same aisle, uh, so yep. will there be uh, any protection uh, apart from the operator being uh, vigilant about uh, traffic coming in that aisle? Will the yep. truck know uh, that uh, there is a person or a obstruction in the aisle or in the path of movement? Yep, you see down here the cube, which is now uh, uh, facing red because he's detected another pocket. This is a uh, uh, a scanner, which is one in the front and one in the back of the unit. Okay. You okay. see on the turret truck, and you can put it on the stock pick as well. The slot okay. in here, and okay. the, the slot is detecting a person, so this is a per personal detection sensor. So it will detect okay. people. In Europe, this is a duty. You gotta have it, and, and uh, nevertheless, it's not allowed to move uh, in an aisle, um, to walk down up and down in an aisle. Okay. So okay. in addition to that, 
you have to scan us as an option. Yep. Okay. So uh, the next, I think we have time for another uh, two questions. So the next what? question is about uh, wave. So this question is about can wave run on a quota stone flooring. Now let me explain this quota stone flooring. This is like a tiled flooring, not really a industrial flooring. So yep. will it run? We there? do. Yep. We do it in all the supermarkets. The supermarkets, retail stores are tiled floor. Uh, it makes this constant banging. Uh, so yes, uh, it rattles and makes funny noise. Yes, it it runs on it. We have uh, thousands of trucks running on uh, tiles. Yep, on the tiled floor. Okay, so uh, just uh, I mean this is this is my follow through question. So when it continuously runs on such floors, does it lead to any increased maintenance? Uh, 10%. You have to add ten percent. Every now and then you, you open up all screws and tighten them again, and then the truck will be fine. So every three years. Okay. Okay. Sometimes now the last. We got to lose. We've got a, a pay safe truck. It's designed for that purpose. Right, right. Designed for supermarkets, shopping malls, etc. To hang the signs up from the ceiling, uh, Walmart, uh, all those uh, supermarkets will have do have uh, tile floors. So, a no-brainer. Right, right. So uh, the last uh, question is about uh, stock picker. Like uh, in stock picker, if you have uh, a person like wanting to go. Uh, to the end of the pallet uh, while he's stock picking, while it is on the forks. So what sort of safety uh, is built into a product, whether yep. it's a cage or a pallet? Yep. First of all, in Europe, people prefer a whole frame and a, a frame around the front end, around the box. Uh, maybe a, a trolley, which is attached and then uh, connected. Uh, in America, the people are handling it different. The forks, which uh, the, the uh, stock picker, which you showed in your invite, is not having front gates. So people are using uh, a lanyard, and the lanyard is like a safety belt with a belt around the operator, so he can step out, and he he is in uh, in a locked position when he's uh, suddenly falling down. So it will be like a, a safety belt on on the car. So it follows you with your movement, but uh, when you step off and you fall down. It locks in and keeps you in the position. So both systems available. Europeans prefer a fixed platform with side gates, so a huge platform around, like Amazon is uh, using uh, uh, big platforms, and uh, the Americans are preferring uh, uh, detachable box, uh, pallet, and then the lanyard and uh, the operator safety belt. Right. So with that, uh, Oliver, we are at the end of this uh, session. Maybe the other questions we will get back to the customers uh, separately through an email. And I would like to take this uh, opportunity to uh, thank you uh, for your uh, time. And I think it was a very, very enlightening session for all of us to understand the journey of stock picker uh, and uh, to understand how uh, different applications need different products. So uh, with that, I once again thank you and we look forward to more such enlightening sessions from you, Oliver, and I'm sure you will be more than happy to be with us again. Absolutely. Next time we can do uh, uh, the dock, dock level operation or the, the rich truck, uh, modern technology, displays and so on. Uh, we have so many subjects to cover. Um, I'm looking forward to do the next one. Uh, thank you very much to you, Abhishek, and Janak to arrange the whole uh, thing. Um, so I'm only the presenter here. I'm just here uh, talking. You did the, all the things in the background. Uh, thank you very much for arranging yeah. to this, this happening. And uh, yeah, looking forward to, to, to have uh, more questions, more invites, and uh, uh, more sessions like this. Okay, thank you so much, Oliver. Thank you. This event we are drawing to a close. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye from Europe. Bye.